Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to a, another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I'm your host, Will. Thank you for listening and tuning in. And before we start and before we get anything done, remember, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Yes, for all things sarcasm, make sure you keep it here for all things sarcastic. So you know how we do. You know how we roll. Let's get sarcastic. So on today's episode, whether it's today, night, wherever you're at, I don't know, um, I want to welcome my special guest. She is a really good woman, beautiful, intelligent. She's not only is she easy on the eyes, but she's easy on the ears because she can talk that shit. And you know how I like it. I talk that shit, so I like someone else who can match my fly. So I would love to welcome my guest from the Sip and Talk podcast, Miss Bernice. Hello. Hey, hey, what's going on? How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on Sarcasm and Orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I really do. No, thank you. I'm like so excited. Um, oh, and the podcast is Sip and Spill, by the way. Sip and Spill. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's fine. Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> We've been <laughs> sipping, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, I know about you, so why don't you go ahead and give a little information to my listeners and watchers. Sure. So, um, my name is Venice, but everyone calls me V because it's a lot easier to, re- to remember. <laughs> um, I've been, I started podcasting, I would say 2015. Um, I started on a podcast called Talk Heavy, um, where the motto was, if you ain't talking heavy, what you talking for? Um, so we interviewed like a lot of comedians, um, rappers, singers, dancers, just producers, people in the industry. Um, Our mentor from there, he works in the industry, so he was able to get us a lot of connections. And from that, um, I birthed my podcast, Sip and Spill, where pretty much we sip on drinks while spilling the tea on dating and relationships. Um, And I've been doing that one since 2016. Um, Unfortunately, because I uh, (laughs) started actually... So basically, I was... I started working at iHeartMedia doing um, sales for podcasting once they started picking up podcasting. And then Mm -hmm. from there, I went off to grad school and I started working with different production companies that were producing their first podcast. So because of that, I wasn't able to keep focus on my own. So now my main focus is my baby again. So make sure you guys tune in to Sip and Spill because we're coming back heavy. (laughs) Yes. Make sure you check her out too. She is everywhere. Sip and Spill. Um, I've checked out some of her stuff. It's really good. I like to say that because I have to know who I'm talking to before I bring you on. So you always want to do your homework. So I appreciate you joining. I really do. And it's interesting, like 2016, like when, like where did you review just like heavy until you say, okay, I want to do this. I want to start my home. When did that happen for you? So what happened was when I was doing talk heavy, I was living in Philadelphia And then both of my parents um, ended up going into the hospital at the same time. So I had to, me being the youngest one with no kids um, (laughs) out of the siblings, it made the most sense for me to come home and take care of them. So honestly, it kind of worked out because Sip and Spill was an idea that I had anyway, because on Talk Heavy, I'm the only woman on that podcast. It's all men. I'm the only woman. But I kind of wanted to do a flip where it was kind of like, two or three women and we interview men to get their perspective on dating um so when i moved home one of my best friends she was also um in the process of moving home to starting her like fashion business so we decided to start it from there it started off actually with us just collabing on like a youtube channel type of thing and then it got popular like people kept telling us they wanted us to do it so we were like oh well let's just make it its own thing and so (laughs) that's how sip and spill was born so how did your popularity grow like where like where did you start into where it catapulted to where it is now 
Yeah, so um, it's, it actually started as a YouTube channel. So we went backwards, right? So um, <laughs> we should, because this was kind of when podcasting was still kind of new. Because even when I started podcasting in 2014, I didn't know what I was doing. I just showed up to talk on a mic every week. But <laughs> but um, so we started as just a YouTube channel. We like bought cameras and um, got some, for the longest, we didn't even have mics. Like we were just going around and just interviewing people like in our city or in close proximity who were like in the entertainment industry and it got very popular in our city so then from there we started collabing with other um like our first actual collaboration that i think about it was in the uk um with a group of guys um they were called talk that talk i don't know if they're still going but they were doing the same exact thing we were doing but in the uk so we did like a valentine's day collaboration that went really well and then from there we kind of just started collabing with different creators in different cities so i i believe um last time i checked most of our viewership is in new york philly and um in dc which makes sense because that's where most of our collabs were but yeah that's pretty much um a lot of it and then you know of course remaining consistent um i always tell podcasters that you have to remain consistent in this world or if you're going to do something like a seasonal podcast um just make sure you're very clear with your listeners of the fact that it is kind of seasonal or where you're going because if you just drop off with no explanation you're going to lose a lot of your listenership Wow, well, mm. she's dropping some gym, folks. And I, think, <laughs> I think that we need to be listening. And I can say for me, um, like I've started out in January. Oh wow, well, okay. Yeah, so I'm I'm still new. I'm still yeah. new. To this, but I picked up a lot of gems and tools from just talking with other podcasters mm-hmm. in this space that we're in. Because they, from what I've been told, like it's little but it's big. If that mm-hmm. makes sense, mm-hmm. um, like yeah, the podcast can be a, a very little space where there's so many other people, but it can be so big because you can have your own set audience, your own set uh, show to where everybody knows and tune in, and then if you go on someone else's, they can be almost big to where they bring you bring listeners to from them to you. So mm-hmm. I've I've been fortunate to be a part of some other. Um, other podcasting to where I've been guests on there and they've been guests online and it's just it's been a real nice so it's almost like I've seen the numbers increase but then mm-hmm. I've seen a little decrease so it's almost like discouraging sometimes yeah I mean the numbers are the numbers you know sometimes you'll have a hit but it's gonna as long as this you know as long as you remain consistent the numbers will consistently go up you know so never yeah. compare like your highest viewed episode to your lowest viewed episode just look at that average and you'll notice that the average over time is going to increase um and you're doing it right like collabing with other podcasters is definitely in my opinion the best way to kind of like get your voice out there to the audience you're trying to reach because we're our podcast listeners they're listening to podcasts right so it's kind of like you know if you go on somebody's show and they vibe with you you're not even necessarily taking their listener it's just now they're going to listen to you and them you know mm-hmm. so yeah and then it's almost like i'm trying to do that youtube thing and that is mm-hmm. almost a different animal by itself it is and <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like trying to like remain consistent on that, but I've read like trying to post at least two to three times a week. It's almost like I don't know if I want to do three videos a week for YouTube. Like mm-hmm. I have a real job where I work in damn near sixty hours, and I put another twenty hours into this. So right. like, when do I sleep? <laughs> and so, so see, my my form has been like when I started, I was making an episode every day. Every day I was recording. You were going the radio route. <laughs> yes, yes, I was. But it was still because I had so many ideas that I was mm-hmm. formulating. I was writing, I was editing, producing, and doing everything. But now that I slowed down, now it's like I do it three times a week. Now since I gotta do YouTube, so it's almost like trying to find that equal balance between the two. Yeah, no, that's that's really impressive because a lot of people, like I know that had to be hard for you to force yourself to continue pushing because in the beginning you don't see like 
you know, basically you don't see the, um, the return on your investment in the beginning. Right. So I definitely commend you for like continuing. Cause from January to now, that's a good amount of time. Most podcasts don't last beyond three months. Um, so yeah, claps to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And also, I just... um, I just wanted to make a real quick recommendation in reference to like the YouTube thing. Um, instead of thinking of it as you have to record a new video not have to i didn't mean have yeah to. well no no no. i know what you meant though but i was saying like um something that i i found works really well is actually just taking that one long form and cutting it up into three different ways so once you have an interview just cut out different interesting clips try to make it at least eight minutes so you can get that monetization i'm um, sorry i'm dropping all types of no, that, no, that's good. I told you we were just going to talk about things. So, good. yeah, no, Ooh, this is like this is a good info. So, so I, I didn't want this to be like, like a you. podcast and one on one class. No, but if it, I'm it, helping, then no, nah, it, it's, it's helping. I mean, yeah, because we're still talking and we're mm -hmm. still we're still like being funny, but also being funny and serious at the same time. So, right, please, off me. Go ahead, please. <laughs> yeah, no, but. Yeah, so what I would do is like say this this episode we're doing right now, right? Um, what I would recommend is to cut, find two clips out of this episode that are at least, I'll just say 10 minutes just because it's an even number, but you want to do at least eight minutes. And what I would do is drop one of them before you drop this episode, drop the episode, and then drop another one after. So that way you are keeping up that three times a week thing um without necessarily having to record content all over again and edit new content because you're already going to be editing and cutting this up anyway if that makes sense yeah yeah. Makes yeah and um and then it's like you know even if you still have ideas i'm very big on pre-recording the only way i was able to remain consistent with podcasting was pre-recording so it's like you know even if you come up with an idea i always recommend you can still record it and edit it just hold on to it you know like you don't have to like put it out that day just because you thought of it you can kind of just have all of those um in your you know in your files or wherever you save them at and then just have them scheduled out to go um so that way if you need a break i've, I've gone where i've recorded 20 episodes in a matter of two weeks and after i recorded edited and scheduled them all out i didn't have to do anything for my podcast for 20 weeks um so and i needed that break because i did that on purpose because i was feeling overwhelmed but if you do all of that in advance you can free up your time especially with you having a job that you work so many hours you know so yeah just make this make this industry work for you you know don't work for it make it work for you that's my whole thing yeah and it was it's uh -huh. interesting that you say that because last week i i did a week well it was like two weeks i did of interviews i did in the span of 14 days i did maybe about 15 interviews Woo! 15 yes yes out of those 15 i picked five because i did an interview week so i did uh -huh. a different interview week every single day last week and okay. it was all audio because i wanted to hear you listen to it rather than watching because okay. I figured it would be easier for you to attain the information listening rather than watching because some people, they like to have that click through rate and mm -hmm. I don't like that. So it was five different interviews, five different stories, five great pieces of information that I wanted people to get to. Like I did a mental health, I did a surface level type of one, even in a financial one that we all need to learn and know about. Mm -hmm. So right. it's, it's almost, I think like I want to do something like that almost maybe every couple of weeks by just yeah. picking a week of five interviews and it just be straight audio. I don't want to do video for that one because um, through my research that I did, people are more interested in listening rather than watching. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I, I definitely get it. Um, and then also you can still record the video mm -hmm. and then use it later, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, as long as you have it, the more content, the better. Cause we're in a content world. I am so sorry. I'm so hot. I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I am hot over here, Whew, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I just looked at my face. I'm like, I am shining. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like one of those good? old church ladies. Like, I need a man. You feel me? Like, 
Get her a fan, brother. Get her a fan. Right, right. Be a fan. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so like in your experience, what has been like? I want to say the good and the bad. I think you gave me a little bit of both, but I would mm-hmm. really like you to expand more on it if you can. Yeah, I mean, I think definitely. Um, one focusing on creating content that is sustainable for you because sometimes what you'll find is that you'll start creating content for everybody else and then you become miserable creating that content because it's like it might be like you know a one-off thing that you did and now everybody's asking you to do it and so you start doing it but now it's kind of like becoming your show and so now it's like oh this one-off thing is now my show this isn't something I actually enjoy this isn't something I'm passionate about this isn't something I'm interested in and so now you're forcing yourself to do something you don't want to do in an industry that takes a while for you to grow anyway so my recommendation is always to make sure that the content you're putting out is sustainable for you and what I mean by that is like you're putting out content that you genuinely are interested in that you genuinely you know want to put out um that you enjoy doing um rather than trying to force yourself because the hardest the 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 battle in podcasting is really consistency so it's better to it's easier to remain consistent when you're doing something you love Mm -hmm. and when it when it comes to doing what you love and Mm -hmm. you feel so you're in your right lane has there has there ever been a time or will there ever be a time where people told you yet that mode is you can do anything else. So is there oh, a way to where yeah, to where you just absolutely. want to bump against it and be like, well, you know what you're talking about because you're not doing it every day. So right. like, yeah, absolutely. You're you're gonna get that all the time, especially from like people are gonna try to tell you how to do your show who aren't consistent or don't have a show. Like I'll never forget I interviewed an athlete um on one of our episodes it was called dating an athlete and we wanted to hear like i had dated a professional athlete but i wanted to hear the perspective as the professional athlete so we interviewed one and we kind of were going back and forth on our perspectives but anyway during that interview after it was over i will never forget he sat there for like 45 minutes to tell me and my co-host everything we were doing wrong and that we needed to actually turn our podcast into a nonprofit so that we could get money from the government and i'm like so rewind a big part of our show is drinking like whatever we have a guest we ask them what their favorite alcoholic beverage is and we provide it for them because the whole concept is you're sipping and the more comfortable you get the harder the questions get so i asked them i'm like how would we be able to get a nonprofit? <laughs> For a show called Sip and Spill, where the whole concept is drinking. Like, and he was just like, Oh, you need to change the name. And he literally was just trying to turn the show into something it just was not. And so if we hadn't like stuck our guns of like trusting what we were doing and trusting that we were gonna, you know, see success in what we had already planned out, we could have easily fell victim to that because he's deemed a successful athlete, you know, like he's supposed to know what he's talking about and things of that nature. So you're definitely, as you grow, are gonna come across people trying to tell you how to do you. And my whole thing is if it don't apply, let it fly. So if you hear something and it's BS, just let it go and just let them go. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's all that's that's a good you say that because I remember what my my third month, so we're talking March, like mm-hmm. March is April. I was start like, okay, it's time for me to stop doing solo, start getting, you know, guests, you know. Um, and I was in one of one of these Facebook groups and a guy, he messaged me. He was like, I can get you guests, you know, that are well-rounded, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, no problem. So he was like, well, give me all your info. I send him my info. Then he sees the name, 
automatically you said i cannot do this because your name or your show would not be marketable and i'm like i don't understand how it could not be marketable yes it says sarcasm orgasms but still it's like you have to understand why it's called that way mm-hmm. i understand the connotation might be sex but it's not sex right it has nothing to do with sex at all and i had i and i keep going over and over and over and saying to this him and of course this white man did not get it he was like uh-uh. yeah I, I can't do it i can't have authors and public figures or whatever come on your show and talk about whatever when it's probably going to be categorized as a sex stories i'm like no sex is going to be talked about but whatever but right. here i am like i've had over some 30 guests to date uh-huh. and it still is like of course you know the name catches you more than anything that's and how you got me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the name yes. <laughs> so it's like you you have to at least be able to take a little bit of the chance to find out why uh-huh. and then then you'd be like okay well i'm, I'm not going to do that and i remember this one guest that still bothers me to this day it was like a month and a half ago i reached out i said you talk about finance i would love to have you on we come and talk he was like okay had no problem with the name he went he listened to a couple of my episodes now this was back in beginning of july so i did an episode on fourth of july where i was being not racist, but a little bit more of uh, poking fun at 4th of July. So I right. turned it into like 4th of July, meaning 400 years of slavery and oppression, Jew <laughs> who's lying. So I took that <laughs> and then funny. and then I even made, uh, went a little bit farther, I made a moniker of the fireworks that black people don't celebrate 4th of July anyway. It's just another off day. And right. really, fireworks are nothing but our forefathers jacking off in each other's faces. And so, when you see fireworks, it's really calm. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that guy, he took offense of it because he was a war veteran, and then he called me a racist. Yes. Okay. Yes, he called me a racist okay. because I said white people have more privileges than white, black people. And, but you, you see a homeless white man, you'd be thinking, how'd you fumble that bag, bro? Uh-huh. Like, I still have that DM from him. And I almost want to post it so people Oh, he DM'd understand. you and said that? Yes, all, oh, of, it. all wow. of it. I got the whole thing. I have not deleted it. So. Wow. Air him out. <laughs> 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 I'm riding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I swear it's just like things like that it pushes me to keep going because yeah. sometimes you just need a little nudge to say yeah you're rubbing people the wrong way but you're catching people's attention and that's, that's true that's what I'm just trying to do make push the envelopes where you can actually open it up and see what is going on not just hold it up and think oh i think this is a bill or i think this is a check no i'll be a little bit different so my name alone is very different and Uh it just i attract people who i really don't think i should be attracting i really don't like i have i have a lost episode that i will never release i would never let anyone hear I interviewed this lady, and this is why I do pre-screens. I have right. to, because I had this lady on. She was a sex worker, so she was on the phone. And while she was on the phone, she was talking to me. So at the same time, she was like, oh, yeah, Big Daddy, I love that dick being slapped across my face. I can't wait for it to put it inside me. Then she's answering questions at the same time. So she's having two conversations with the cognizance as if she's just oblivious to what is going on. <laughs> that is hilarious <laughs> and you have it all recorded yes i was recorded no. just like we're doing now that is I, hilarious. Like, I was, the look on my face is just like what the fuck her camera was up yes yes <laughs> yes yes so she didn't even care that like this was no, 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 she didn't. 
That is so funny. Oh my yeah. goodness. I, I will never release that episode ever. I don't want no one to hear it because I sat there for 20 minutes trying to think, what the hell do I say to this? Oh, like, oh I don't goodness. know. Right. I really like, don't know. Are you done? Or- <laughs> <laughs> Like who are you talking to? A bad like? time. Yes. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I would probably release a clip as like a throwback. <laughs> it's like that one interview that will never come out, and it just dropped like a 10 second clip. <laughs> but I understand. That's hilarious. Oh yeah. my goodness. And there's been some days I think, well, I'll pick it a short short and put it on YouTube. Yes. Put it yes. There. But yes. I'm like, no, I can't do that because. It's almost like I, I I'm almost big on having your permission, making sure it's okay. So if I do that and it gets back to her, then something might happen because you know white people they like to sue everybody. But I mean, she agreed to come on the podcast, though, right? Yes, yeah, she did. She and did get recorded. Mm-hmm. So that's your content at that point. I had that issue before, but because the person had agreed to come on, it's kind of like I can do with the content as I please. Mm-hmm. Um, now, granted, I I don't try to do people wrong, but I don't think you would be doing her wrong in that because she knew that you were recording, and in her mind, that interview was coming out anyway. <laughs> um, I feel wronged and robbed of my time because I was. Oh yeah, I would never get that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I will say too, when you were asking about like some of like the worst like things I've dealt with podcasting interviewing is definitely at the top like so right now my co-host is taking a break so i'm pretty much running it solo and um i really do not want to interview anybody who i who i like haven't already built a rapport with or like have had like i need to understand our chemistry because i've interviewed so many people oh my goodness so many people with the driest of driest of personalities and they and then what kills me is they always position themselves like oh yeah because i'm hilarious my friends like they always position themselves and big themselves up and then as soon as you kick record it's like what happened uh huh. Yeah. Yep. Yes, I had I had a I had a pre-screen last week before I flew out to New York, which I, that's where I'm at now. I talked to this guy, and I, of course you remember on the questionnaire I said, "What makes you sarcastic?" Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This Negro put, "I'm just me," and I'm thinking, "How the hell can I work with that?" So when when I talk to him, and we're talking the night before I leave. I'm thinking I cannot have this nigga on because he's just dry. Yeah. I'm 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 telling him what my podcast is, who I'm about, blah blah blah, what I like to do. And I'm thinking, well, what do you like to do, bro? Oh man, we can do whatever you want to. Quiet. Crickets. And then I, I check his his stuff out on Instagram and I'm not gonna blast him that I'm not right. Him. But you know, he's all he's getting raw raw and i'm thinking can you be like that on the phone like how are you going to connect with somebody if you can't even be that how you are your ig into the interview that we're about to do so i tell everybody if i don't like it but okay well i like what i hear i'll reach out to you i'll send you my info never tell them again right that's why i have reach for shit like that straight mm-hmm. shit like that because i hate it i hate you know taking t- a 10 15 minutes of my time to send you an invite and then it's almost like you ain't interested and then you forget and mm-hmm. then you be like oh bro i'm sorry and it's like now i start charging people if i think you are going to flake on me i'll charge you five dollars just to show up for the free that's fair and a, yeah and a lot of people have gotten mad at me but i tell them if you show up i'll send your money back with no problem no mm-hmm. problem mm-hmm. but Half of them There's did not always want to my do time. It. Yes. If you're not going to show up, just say, oh, I'm not interested. It's plain and simple. Mm-hmm. And I think that's another thing when it comes to podcasting that I've noticed is like people waste other people's time, but then they complain, like, oh, well, I can't find good people to make good content with. Well, what do you expect? Right. What do you right. expect? I, oh my goodness. Like, 
I think also the thing that frustrates me is when I think about my least favorite interviews that I've done, because most of them aren't out. There's a few that are out because it was when I first started. But when I think about that, they were the most arrogant human beings I ever dealt with. They were so entitled. And I'm just like, you bring all of this just to give me a horrible episode. Like, that I can do nothing. Which is <laughs> fucking trash. Like, are you serious? Like, oh my, I remember... So when we started Sip and Spill, we turned my uh, parents' basement into a studio. And so that's where we would like have people come. We would even like order them Ubers and stuff because we knew they were going to be drinking. Like we had everything set up. And I'll never forget, there was this rapper that we interviewed. And he was like, he felt like he was getting some buzz. If I told you who he was, I would guarantee you everything in my bank account you would have no idea who he is but in please his mind me. Please, please tell me i can't please. say it on here i want to do it on here but after i'll tell you <laughs> but, um, but i guarantee you, you would have no idea who he is but anyway so in his mind he got this little buzz you know the P he was doing little shows in philly like he was somebody never headlined his own show but whatever anyway so he like he flaked on us on our first interview and after honestly after this experience with him i changed all of my rules towards like interviewing people um because that like prior to that i would kind of let people like come and go as they please or like you know be however minutes late and then i'd be okay like oh we'll still record but after this no so he flaked on us the first time we rescheduled and it was like a no call no show flake like he just went mia i wasn't going to reach out but my co-host she's like she's the opposite of me so she's like super sweetheart doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings never wants to offend anybody so she reached out like oh are you okay i'm like of course that nigga's fine ain't nothing wrong with his ass <laughs> but yeah so he hit back saying he was like stuck in the studio or something like that could we reschedule cool reschedule to a time he agrees on and like I told you, we always ask everybody kind of like, what is their drink of preference? So we asked him, he said tequila. And we were like a specific kind. He was like, no, it's fine. Just get whatever. We'll get tequila. So we're like, okay, cool. So fast forward, um, they, uh, we go, we get him like his own personal thing, a Patron, set up the studio. We look, I think the agreed upon time was like 6.30 or seven o'clock. Um, around 7 15, haven't heard from him, nothing. So, like, my co host, she reaches out to him, like, Hey, uh, we're just checking to make sure you're okay. Um, we're all set up here. He was like, Oh, yeah, I'm on my way. Hour later, Oh, yeah, I'm on my way. Two hours later, Oh, yeah, I'm on my way. He showed up at my house three hours after the agreed upon time, then complained about the Patron. Because he said, oh, he's used to getting, I think he said, like, um, what's that expensive tequila? This was before 1942 was the thing. I don't drink tequila, so. Oh, okay. Well, it's like one of those, like, which, by the way, Patron is a top shelf tequila. So what are you complaining about? But anyway, he was just I like, mean, oh. There, there's that. There's, like, Cabo Wabo. I drink that. Okay. Sometimes. No. Yeah. Time, sometimes. Honestly, I don't remember the name of it, but he had said, oh, I'm used to drinking this, but I guess this will do. And I'm like, you guess. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, you lucky I'm still giving you this bottle. Like, what? <laughs> and so then he sits down, he does the interview, and I was so annoyed because, like, I have a big personality, so... I'm okay with like being the person to pull out of people, but it gets annoying. Like when you have to do it over an extended period of time. And with him, it was like, he was giving nothing. Like, I think he might've said like no more than 10 words that whole interview. And I'm just like, why did you even come? Like you should have just canceled whatever and all this type of stuff. So then when it was time for his episode to come out, we were basically like conflicted because I didn't want to put it out, but my co-host, she did. And so he had reached out like, hey, when's the interview coming now? I told everybody about it. They're hyped. Da -da 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 -this, da -da -da -da. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck about your little fan base. <laughs> At this point, I don't need you no more. So yeah, all that to say, like, I'm sure you can relate to like people just really show like 
people are so inconsiderate <laughs> when it comes to time when it comes to like podcasting and it's just i'm glad that you have like that five dollar thing i feel like you should keep that because people will absolutely disrespect your time and they have um because it was just like i when i really started learning how to schedule and i was using the calendar i was like back to back to back i'm like okay I send the info, they send me back. I'm like, okay, here's my cash app. Send me $5. So if you show up for the podcast, not the pre-interview, that way, if you don't show up, I keep it as Uh expense to me. People were just complaining, complaining, complaining. So I stopped. And I began, fine. It's just like, if I get a feeling like I don't think you want to show up, then I'll go ahead and throw it out. But usually... When I do a pre-screen, how I did with you, I was mm-hmm. fine. I was comfortable. I'm like, okay, she'll show up. Ain't got nothing to worry about. But it's just the right. people that you think might be a flake. You want to take it? Don't want to take a chance to just try it. Anyway. So I will yeah. ask you this: um, what 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 are your rules when it comes to podcasting? When it comes to interviews, what are the things you will do as opposed to what you won't do? When right. So when it oh, I'm sorry. No. When yeah, I'm sorry. When it comes to interviews, um, one time is very important to me. So um, I don't really do pre-screening anymore because now I'm not really willing to interview somebody who doesn't have like... I have to see you have done other podcasts or you have your own podcast and see how you interact with people before I agree to have you on the show. So um, I don't really do the pre-screening thing anymore because it's like I can see. And also a lot of the time I'll talk to you anyway in some way so it's kind of like whether i meet you in like a platform like when clubhouse was popular i collabed with a lot of people in clubhouse but that's because we were co-moderating rooms together so i knew that that chemistry was there um because with like podcasting chemistry to me is like the most important thing when it comes to the quality of the content so if that chemistry isn't there i'm not going to waste you or my time by trying to push through an interview that i know isn't good you know so i think because i've been doing it for so long now i can just i know instantly if i'm going to be able to like have that chemistry with somebody um but in reference to time though if you are more than 20 minutes late um i'm canceling the whole thing like i'm not recording you're going to have to reschedule you're going to have to rebook all of that um the whole thing's getting shut down because by that point i'm just going to record with my co-host or by myself but i'm not allowing anybody to disrespect my time even if i don't start i don't care i'm not allowing anybody to disrespect my time because i've had that too where somebody was like 20 minutes late and they text me like hey i'm on my way i was like oh no you're gonna have to reschedule and i hadn't even started recording yet but i didn't care because i'm like i'm not gonna allow that habit to become like oh i can be this amount late and still be on the show like no you have to come on time to be on the show so yeah yeah okay especially when like you get to the point where you're dealing with studios because studios don't play about like the hours you book with them so if i if i book an hour for like our episode and you come late and we have to go over that hour because you were late then yeah you're gonna have to to you're gonna have to do something whether it's your time's gonna be cut short or you're gonna have to give me something back yeah. financially but yeah there's not going to be a uh yeah no with studios they are very strict with their time so yeah that's why i'll sit down tell rooms <laughs> 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 well you know what i like this and i need to have you come back for a second conversation because there's much more that i i want to ask you personally that okay. i need to know so <laughs> you, you, you definitely are coming back B. <laughs> okay <laughs> Man, I had so much fun with you. I really did. Man, I could just sit here and listen to you all day and talk about podcasting. I really could because I, of course, I hear it. Um, I hear you got a passion for it. I do too. I love this. I really love it. Not mm-hmm. just because of um, the stuff I'm talking about, but just the people that I get to meet, I get to yeah. talk to. It's, it's lovely. It really is. It's so much better than Facebook. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I like... I. <laughs> 
like when I was on my hiatus, I literally felt like I lost a piece of myself because I wasn't podcasting. Like I was growing my business, which is to help other people with podcasting, which I still have a passion for. But like you said, like it's like the people you meet, the conversations you have, just being like on the mic and just letting loose of what you felt like that day, you know, like it just feels so good. So <laughs> So, yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I would love to come back. It was a pleasure talking to you. Definitely, everybody, make sure y'all subscribe to his podcast. I already have. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. And before I let you go, I just mm-hmm. one more question. So, um, I know you got caught by the name. When you went and you listened to some of the episodes, was mm-hmm. there something that you learned that you didn't know about or you didn't think about or in some type of? sense hmm. Let me or that you may you might enjoy from the episode that you did so i listened to the bbl and the ssl um which were the two you recommended um i definitely thought they were funny especially the bbl episode um it's a lot of like sarcasm in there um but things that like i feel like some people were just afraid to say but i mean hey it's the honest to god truth like so (laughs) i definitely recommend that one i also listened to i cannot remember which interview i listened to i'm so sorry i do not remember which interview i listened to um, but I really did enjoy the solo podcast ones that I listened to. Okay, great. Well, thank you, guys. That <laughs> makes me feel good. It makes me know that I'm doing something right, especially from an OG vet like you. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. So um, please let people know where they can find you, where they can listen to you and your co-host um, if they want to like get in touch with you. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you can find us at Sip and Spills literally everywhere. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube is all there. Um, the easiest way to find us is sippinspills.com. Um, so that's S I P A N D S P I L L S dot com. Um, and you'll find the links to everything that we're on. We also have um we we have a partnership with some um, wine companies. So if you want some discounted wine, we have the links in there um i keep them updated as much as i can so yeah check us out me personally i am um at i am dot venice across all social media um so yeah check us out <laughs> wow sounds like i found my my manager <laughs> 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 but no, but no, thank you. Thank you so much, V or Venice, however you want to be called. Thank I appreciate you. you so much. This was so fun. Man, man, it's it's beautiful <laughs> what you can accomplish if you just open up your mouth. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh <laughs> uh, no problem. Thank you so much. You take care and I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Right. Yes, people, that was my guest, Miss Venice from the Sip and Spill podcast. Make sure that you go check her out, her and her, her uh, co-host that was not with us today. But thank you so much for joining me, joining her. Man, I appreciate y'all. So make sure that y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so y'all can see all things sarcastic. All things sarcastic because you know how we do. You know how we do it. Yes. So thank you so much, Venice, for coming on. I appreciate you. Much love. So remember, people, make sure you keep it locked here. Also, go check out the podcast on all podcast platforms, no matter where it's at. So I will talk to y'all all soon, and y'all take care.